welcome back to another video here upon the old YouTube channel. Got another album review Saturday for y'all. This is the series where I take y'all's album suggestions and I review them here upon YouTube. So, without the with all the bullshit out of the way, let's get straight into it to review the five albums that were suggested for this series. Alright, so the first album that was suggested is probably my favorite out of the bunch for this week, and that is going to be Agents of Fortune from Blue Oyster Cult. Now, those who know me real well know I'm a pretty massive classic rock fan, love tons of bands, you know, from the 70s, 80s, 60s, all that type of stuff, but Blue Oyster, Blue Oyster Cult is a band that's never really been one of my favorites, other than a couple of their hit songs, one of which comes off here. Never really been that big of a fan of them, you know. I just never really liked their overall sound. I don't think they're a bad band by any means. I think they're a pretty rockin' band. They just never really been my cup of tea. There's tons of other 60s, 70s, 80s bands, you know, that I would personally rather listen to than Blue Oyster Cult. And, uh, you know, I haven't listened to a Blue Oyster Cult album from the start to finish before. This was my first time ever, but I have listened to a bunch of their songs spread across all their albums. So, uh, Agents of Fortune was the first album by them I listened to start to finish, and uh, after listening to it, I liked it a little bit better than I initially thought, but it's still not really an album for me. Of course, I've heard Don't Fear the Reaper many, many times throughout my life. I dig that song quite a bit, as well as a couple of their other hits from their other albums, but like I said, not really a huge fan. The other two standout tracks I would say off this album are From Side 1, which are ETI, Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and This Ain't the Summer of Love. Other than that, there are a few alright songs, but just overall not really an album that gravitates towards me in any way at all, and not really an album that I will ever really care to listen to again. But, I am curious to listen to start to finish to some of their other albums, you know, throughout the 70s and 80s, and seeing if I like those a little bit more than this one, and just seeing what they sound like in general. So, I would be down to listen to some other Blue Oyster Cold albums, but as far as this one, listening to start to finish, probably not, unless I'm doing a video on Blue Oyster Cold where I need to listen to it or something like that, but I doubt that'll ever happen, since I'm not really a huge fan of them, but... Those are pretty much going to be my thoughts on Agents of Fortune from Blue Oyster Cult. Definitely a pretty good album, I would say, for what it's going for. Just not the one for me, personally. So, we're going to get to the second album that was suggested. So, the second album that was suggested is going to be The Burning from British Lion. Those who don't know, British Lion is actually a side project started by Steve Harris, who is the bass player and one of the main songwriters for Iron Maiden. And those who know me quite well know I love Iron Maiden to death. A really, really great and rockin' band there. So going into this, I was, I was honestly expecting to like it just a little bit more than I initially did. I was kind of a little disappointed by it. But overall, I still enjoyed it and thought it was a good album. Definitely a lot better than the next three albums we're gonna get to. But, you know, just overall, just like Agents of Fortune, an album I would say is good. Just maybe not the one for me. If I'm in the mood to listen to anything Steve Harris, I'm going to listen to Iron Maiden because, you know, that's his best bass playing, best writing, you know, just overall best band, you know, since it is his main band and this is just a side project. But as far as songs that stand out to me, the three ones that stood out to me the most are Lightning, the title track The Burning, and City of Fallen Angels. And those are ironically the three biggest songs off the album and those stood out to me the most for whatever reason, but, you know. Just overall, not really an album I'll really ever care to listen to again. I mean, if it's on in the background, you know, I may not turn it off unless I'm really, really paying attention towards the music. But if someone turned it off, I wouldn't be too offended to want to turn it off. So, you know, there's that. Overall, I would say it's a good album, just not for me. So, those are pretty much my thoughts <coughs> on the burning from British Lion. So the third album that was suggested is probably my least favorite out of the bunch, and one I just really did not care for at all. And that is going to be Inside of Emptiness from John F. Y'all have to forgive me, I do not know how to pronounce this guitar player's last name, even though he's a pretty big uh, guitar player, most notably known for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I've never really been a Red Hot Chili Peppers fan at all, other than a couple of their big hits, and I knew who uh, the guy was going into this. I was like, oh, he's from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I wonder how this will turn out. You know, I think this is way, way worse than anything uh, RHCP has uh, ever done. I was pretty disappointed by it, honestly. You know, 
The guitar playing was fine. You know, nothing special for me. Anyhow, if you're a big fan of him or the Red Hot Chili Peppers, I can see somebody liking this a lot more than me. My biggest issue were the vocals. I did not care for the vocals on this album at all. I couldn't wait for this album to end because the vocals were just grating on me so bad. I just did not want to finish listening to it because of the vocals. But I sucked it up and uh, made it to the end. I just not did not care for them. And some of the songs, the way they're structured, just really didn't work for me either. The type of songwriting on this album just really in the songwriting for me. I don't feel like this is this guy's best work at all. If he did the vocals on here, then he's a terrible singer. In my opinion, probably should have got the Red Hot Chili Peppers vocalist or some other vocalist you could have found on it. But I'll have to do research uh, once I'm done filming to uh, see who actually sang on here. But those are pretty much my two biggest complaints with this. The songwriting didn't grab me. And the vocals did not grab me at all. Everything else, guitar playing, bass playing, drumming, all, all that was fine, you know. This is just not one for me personally. So those are going to be my thoughts on Inside of Emptiness. So the fourth album that was suggested is going to be an album from Turnstile, and that is Glow On. And Turnstile is a band that I've never really heard for before going into this, and I was pretty mixed on this album. There were things I liked about it, and there were things I didn't like about it. My biggest complaint was probably the way some of the songs were structured. They just felt a little off to me, like they didn't really fit in or work with some of the parts. Uh, while some other songs were pretty well structured, I thought, and pretty well written. So I was kind of mixed on, you know, half the songs were alright, half the songs weren't really well structured. My second biggest complaint is the singer I felt worked on some songs, and uh, some other songs did not really work at all. Uh, the singer's style really in my cup of tea to begin with, but I felt like he did better on some songs than other songs, if that made any sense. This is definitely a mixed album for me personally, because I feel like half of it could have been a lot better than it was and been pretty good if tweaked a little bit. And the other half I felt like, you know, not not really my thing or for what they're going for. The guitar tone, I like the guitar playing on here. I thought the guitar tone was nicely done. Overall, I felt... I felt like it was a pretty nice sounding album. Some of the electronic samples and stuff they used for out, I felt were uh, pretty neat. But overall, Turnstile is probably just not the band for me. Just like with the rest of these bands in this video, oddly enough, all were kind of a little bit of disappointment for me. But like with Blue Oyster Cold, I'm definitely curious to see what Turnstile's, uh, the rest of their discography looks like. Because they could have some albums that I would like more than this. So I'm definitely curious to see. And I'll definitely be checking out some of their other albums to see where they uh, took off from here and uh, all their previous albums that came out before this. Because I'm curious to see what they uh, sound like. So those are going to be my thoughts on Glow On from Turnstile. And now we have the final album for this video, Tattoo from Rory Gallagher. I've heard of Rory Gallagher many, many times, but I've never really actually listened to any of his music. You know, after listening to this album, it's pretty much my same thoughts on the rest of the albums. Most of these albums, with the exception of the John F. album, I would say are good albums, just not really for me. You know, there were some things on this that I really enjoyed. Uh, the slide playing that he does on a few songs are really, really cool. I thought it sounded pretty nice. And overall, I felt like his guitar playing was really, really cool. Uh, in my opinion, really like that. Uh, as far as the vocals go, the vocals I liked on some songs, and some songs I really didn't. Pretty much the same thoughts on uh, Turnstile's album. I felt like it worked on some songs, and then it kind of bugged me on some others, if that made any sense. You know, drum and bass playing was fine. Songwriting probably could have been tweaked a little bit to make for uh, my personal taste a little bit more. But overall, I would say Rory Gallagher is a very talented fellow, pretty cool guitar player. I'm pretty sure he did vocals on this album. I'm not 100% sure since I'm not really familiar with him at all. Just listen to this one album per video. But, you know, the good thing with some of these albums is even though I'm pretty mixed on pretty much all of these, and there's some things I really didn't like about all of them, I'm definitely interested to listen to uh, some of their other albums and see where they took off from there and all their previous albums. So I'll definitely be checking out um, some more of Rory Gallagher's stuff. And, you know, if uh, another album by him gets suggested on here, same thing with Blue Oyster Cold or British Lion. Definitely wouldn't be angry at all because I'm definitely curious to see what the rest of his, his discography and some of his other popular albums sound like. So those are going to be my thoughts on Tattoo from Rory Gallagher. All right, so those are going to be my thoughts on the Blue Oyster Cold, British Lion, John F. Turnstile, and Rory Gallagher. 
uh, the albums from them that were suggested. For the most part, this was kind of a little bit of a disappointing week for me because I wish I liked some of these albums a lot more than I did. And all I would say are good with the exception of the John F. album. I just did not really care for that one at all. But the rest of them I felt were pretty good albums. Just maybe a little tweaked a little bit more. I feel like they could have been a lot better than they were, at least my personal opinion. Because some of these are pretty popular albums like the Blue Oyster Cult one and the British Lion I feel like is a little bit popular. But you know. Overall, just not really the week for me, but that's one of the great things about music, how some people can really love some of these albums and how some others cannot really like uh, some of the albums. So it is what it is. So thank you very much to everybody who suggested an album for Album Review Saturday. And if you wish to uh, suggest an album for the next installment for this series, head over to my Instagram uh, every Saturday after I upload one of these videos. I put a question sticker on my story asking for your album suggestions. You put them in there, and I pick the first five ones that are suggested, and they go up on the shelf. And if yours don't make it, you can always suggest uh, the next week's sticker and just keep going till it's suggested. I guess you got to get the timing right to be in the first five. But, you know, ten albums for these videos would take a uh, lot of time and effort, so I feel like five is a uh, good number. But, yeah. Thanks again to everybody who suggested albums. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and enjoyed hearing my thoughts on all of them. And I hope many more of y'all will suggest more albums for Album Reviews Saturday. And hopefully this gets to be a big series because I'm really enjoying it thus far. So please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. Follow me over on Instagram. Link in the description below. And once you're all done watching this video, blast an album you want to hear my thoughts on, I guess. Or one of your favorite albums. And then go out and kick some ass.